Hey guys, so this is the FAQ video. I had, um, I guess, a minor glitch. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, which if you like more personal things, Instagram is probably a better place for you. Not a better place, like in conjunction with YouTube. But I had said I was going to film the FAQ video and that did not work out. So if you've been following for like three months-ish, you know that the, the T3i is what I usually use and it just has been so finicky. It turns off every two to five minutes as I'm filming, so all motivation to film any kind of video is usually gone. Like on the weekends, I usually want to film, but once I get everything set up and my camera keeps turning off, I'm like, whatever, I don't want to deal with it anymore. So I ruffled through my old camcorders and I found this one and I thought it was broken, which is obviously why I hadn't been using it. But I just kind of flipped open the lens a little, and I, this is so bad, I'm not saying anyone should do this with their cameras, but I just went, and I like blew a lot of air into like that area, and I think maybe just needed a little, oh my god, I'm not even going to go there. Actually I will, because this is a personal video. I was like, maybe I just needed a blowjob. So clearly, anyway. I don't even know where this is going. This is an FAQ video. Anyway, new camera. We will talk about this later and uh, in another video. But I just want to say that do we not love the quality? Like, I feel like this is how I look. Like, you can see my makeup really clearly. You can see, like, my eyebrows really clearly. You can see the scar on my cheek. It kind of looks like I'm, like, super contoured out. But, like, if you get really close to my face, you can see that... It's not really a lot of contour, I think it's just the way my face is, like I have a scar there that always catches the light in a weird way, and my cheekbones are really high, and my eye, whatever. So, it always looks like I'm really contoured, but it's, it's not. And swatches, we will be able to do swatches, like up close swatches, like back in the day. Do you guys remember? I remember, like I used to love that my swatches were always so good. But, anyway, FAQ video. Um, I have my iPad here that I collected your questions on. Um, so thank you to everyone that asked the question via the YouTube video and via the Instagram post that I had put up. Um, I hope I answer everything. Now there were a lot of personal questions and there were a lot of beauty questions. And I guess I wasn't very clear that it was going to be more of like a personal question one. So I will definitely do a separate um, beauty FAQ video for you guys. But this one will be purely personal. So if I didn't answer your question, it's either A, it was a beauty question, or B, that question was asked in like someone else's question and I know that FAQ videos can be long so I'm trying to not let it be that way okay I'm gonna do the top three questions and if you wanna X out after those feel free because these are like the three most burning questions are you still in Dubai no are you still married no and what do you do for a living um, I'm gonna give you a little background information. I have a BSBA from The Ohio State University in Business Administration with a focus in international business and I worked at a finance, financial asset management firm for three years uh, after I graduated in Columbus and then I, I think I lived in Philadelphia for a year and then I moved to get married. So that's the background there and then after coming back to the US I, we've, we've always had a family business. Growing up, my parents have always run this business, and we grew up in it. I mean, during Christmas vacations, I would take a job at the mall or something, like retail experience, but every break, every summer, I would be working at the company, and that's what I've done since coming back. So, yes, there are definitely pros to kind of working for yourself, but the cons, I mean, the pros are yes, I can probably make a doctor's appointment whenever I want, and that's fine. But at the same time, like, you might have to stay till 7 one day, or you go in on the weekend, or it's, it's give and take. Sometimes you clean a bathroom or two. So uh, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, like, there are definitely pros and cons, and that is what I do for a living, I guess. I don't know if I need to divulge that much information regarding that. Okay, so those are like the top three most asked questions. Now I'm just going to jump into everything else that people have asked, so feel free to click out if you're not interested in the rest of uh, anything in this video. Okay, I'm not going to like give your names out, I guess. I don't know. Actually, I guess I'm confused as to why people give out the names of who asked the question or is that important to you? Because I'm not, I'm not going to because I feel like a lot of you guys ask the same questions. Uh, you haven't mentioned anything about your wedding. 
So I was just wondering if you're still married, if that's not too personal, and I love your videos. And I think I wanted to address this question because it was specifically said that I didn't talk about my wedding after I got married. And I also just wanted to mention that I didn't talk about having a boyfriend until I was going to get married. I just, in general, am not someone that's very... I think when I started this channel, I just really wanted it to be about makeup. And I didn't really want to get like into like personal things. So the reason I think I mentioned getting married was because I was going to move and I wouldn't be filming for quite some time. Otherwise, I probably would have just like gotten married and like not said anything. I don't know. I, I guess at that time in my life, it was just like a different thing. And like now I'm older and I just feel like maybe I could share things that are more personal. I also felt like in my 20s, it's like not that I think that as someone who's in their 20s, your feelings and opinions are invalid, but I just didn't feel like I had anything to share or anything to kind of communicate that was important. Whereas now that I'm older, I feel like my experiences and my opinions and stuff, I feel more like grounded in them and more committed to what I think and what I feel. So I hope that's not too long of a tangent. I love your videos. I'm glad you're back in the US. You seem happier than you seemed in Dubai. Who wouldn't be happier living in Ohio rather than Dubai? I'm a fellow Buckeye. My question is, are you still married? So thank you for saying you love my videos. And I think, I guess I am happier. I think anyone that has watched this channel for a long time, and for those of you who have, I really want to express my gratitude and how much I appreciate you because when I was in Dubai, I was I felt quite removed from like my life in, in the US, like my family, my friends, like my job, everything that I was kind of, I just felt very like, lifted and then like planted somewhere else and I felt a little disconnected and um, a lot of you guys had wrote me emails and sent me messages especially when I had just moved from India to Dubai I got so many emails and messages and you guys were like are you okay you seem sad are you tired is it the moving and a lot of it was from people who had moved to Dubai from a different country and understood that like it's kind of exhausting to settle there in the beginning you don't really know what's going on and if you're used to kind of like living in some place like the US or living in some place like Europe or just some place that's like culturally different and like where the laws are different it's just a little there's some adjustment that happens and it's kind of I don't know just thank you so much for anyone that like reached out um there's a, there were a lot of like Dubai-oriented questions, so I figured I would address those here too. Uh, hi Jen, I'm new to your channel, but I'm so happy I subscribed and love your videos. I see from comments that you have lived in Dubai. What was life like in Dubai? How long were you living there? And any tips for anyone traveling there? Um, I probably lived there for about two years, and I probably lived in India for about six or seven months prior to that. I, I feel like, especially when it's winter here, every morning I wake up I miss Dubai because it I lived in the marina area, so every morning I'd wake up and I would see like like hints of the beach, the ocean, I would see the marina and I would see boats and you know, you if you are somewhere living, if you're living somewhere where it's warm out and you have palm trees like all day long, that is a blessing. Like to wake up and see water and palm trees every morning is an incredible blessing and I will never forget that. That's just, I feel like eventually I'm going to want to move somewhere warmer anyway because you know, Ohio is really... It's really trying me right now <laughs> and luckily summer is like slowly coming in it's like really bright out today tips for traveling to Dubai I would say definitely visit the Dubai mall there's like the aquarium there definitely do some shopping especially if you're from the US there's a lot of like UK shops that I thought were really fun and nice to have like European equivalents to say forever 21 or Zara or something I mean I guess Zara is like a Spanish retailer but um, Go to the Mall of the Emirates, where you can go skiing indoors. Take a desert safari, visit some mosques. I feel like that's like the gist of, you know, the life there. I've probably been on way too many desert safaris because every time someone would visit, that's what you do. So, okay, so many Dubai questions. Glad I'm not the only one. This might be a bit controversial or personal, but do you have any comments on what's essentially the modern day slavery in Dubai? Do you witness any of it when you were there? And she's read that there's a massive foreign underclass who moved to Dubai for work but get trapped doing menial jobs for no pay. She says, I also follow and watch and read about bloggers and expats who live in Dubai, but they never comment on it. When I read this question, I thought it was really hard to craft an answer because 
I didn't have any personal direct experience with hiring any help. Most people, I would say, have like a maid or a nanny or a cleaning lady or something. I would say that, uh, a lot of things that are, how do I explain this? Like in the West, we're just not as, it's not common to have help as, 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 as it is in say Eastern cultures or like, um, how do I, ex just, I just don't know how to explain it. Like I, I guess I grew up kind of traveling so I was kind of adjusted to it, but having a maid or a nanny or help is, is fairly common because labor is not as expensive. So I did not have any direct um, experience with hiring anybody. When I went there, I was like, I'm going to be an American <laughs> and I am not going to hire anybody. I'm going to do all of my housework. I'm going to do everything on my own. And that in itself is pretty exhausting because I don't know what it is there. Like there, you have a drying machine. It doesn't really dry your clothes that well or it shrinks them or, you know, just so you have to like hang dry and there's a lot of ironing and uh, I would have to like sweep my floors like every day because I didn't have carpet. You know, carpet you can leave it and like vacuum it later, but uh, I would say that, yeah, it's harder. So I didn't have any direct contact with hiring anyone on my own, but my ex's uh, family and, you know, they had a business there and I know that it was common for them to hire from India um, because they were Indian and I think I didn't really see anything bad like they would be like well we need to find someone for the office or we need to find someone for the house and they would just like ask around and then they would pay for the ticket for the the person to come and then they would work so I didn't really see any like mistreatment or like unfair pay one thing that I exhibited or not that I exhibited one thing that I had seen was that like often um, they would take their passports because I feel like sometimes people would just would want to come like leave their country and just have someone pay for their ticket to leave and then they would like run away. So I think a common practice was to kind of confiscate the passport so that you could just ensure that like after you have paid for all of the paperwork and all of, like in their flights and everything and like living accommodations that you would have an employee. So or at least for the amount of time that you know whatever the contract was like was written for. So I hope that really answers the question. I will say a lot of labor comes from India and Bangladesh and uh, the Philippines and it's just those are like the countries closest to Dubai where a lot of people come to either make money and to send back home or just to like build a new life. So I'm sorry that I can't talk about like this in some kind of like horrible way but I just was not really exposed to or nor did I see anything that was like um, not right. So I'm just, I, I hope that answers your question. That's my experience. Hi Jen, I followed you for a couple years. Are you Chinese? Can you speak any other languages besides Chinese? I am Chinese. I'm 75% Chinese and I'm 25% Lao. Is that what it is? Like, it, like my mom is like 50%. Is it Laotian or Lao? I always want to say Lao. I think it's Lao, right? Anyway, if you don't know where Laos is, it's a little country right next to Thailand and like neighboring to like Vietnam and so 75% Chinese, 25% Lao. I speak Mandarin, not well. I'm always incredibly hesitant and embarrassed to speak around native speakers because I know for a fact that my American accent is extremely heavy. Uh, my grandmother on my mom's side had stayed with us for a while, so I was able to speak Thai for maybe like six or seven months, but then after she left, my mom never maintained that language with me because, you know, Chinese and English, that was like enough. Actually, when we were little, uh, we would always be like, I guess I don't want to say forced, but we were forced to speak uh, Chinese at home. So if I ever asked for something or said something in English, my mom would just completely ignore me. Like, like I did not exist. Like I would, she would let me die of thirst before she would give me water until I asked for that water in Chinese. So it was hardcore, but I'm really glad that I know another language and can speak and or understand a second language. In fact, when I had gone to preschool, the teacher had to call my mom because she was like, your daughter doesn't speak English. My mom's like, yeah, well, that's your job because, and yeah, again, she's kind of hardcore, but she didn't want me to have an accent. So she taught me like the alphabet and she taught me like my numbers, but she never actually like communicated with me. So I wouldn't pick up her accent. So I don't know. I'm pretty grateful for that. That was pretty smart on her part. Um, how old are you? What state do you live in? I live in Ohio. I am 32 years old. Any plans to do vlogging? I would love to see your personal life and what about a husband-boyfriend tag? 
seeing as there is no boyfriend or husband <laughs> to speak of, there will be no tag. Although I will also say that it's, I'm, I don't know, I think it would depend on whoever I'm dating or who I'm with, but I would never be someone to push for a tag video. Like, I don't really find it necessary, I don't know, not necessary, like, I'm not big on sharing like that, <laughs> so uh, it would have to come from that person. If that person really wanted to be on this channel, then I maybe would do it, but I would never be like, so, no, it just, it's not for me. Vlogging. I feel like I lead a very mundane life. I have, I would call like an 8.30 to 4.30 job. I work out. I eat. I go shopping. I don't have like a YouTube life, you know what I mean? Like I don't have like events that I go to or, but like I guess I do have some vacations planned. I know you guys really used to like the Let's Get Jet Set videos because I would, you know, do hauls from different countries and stuff, but I think there's a trip I might plan for May. There's a trip I might plan for July, and then eh, my brother's getting married this year, so there's something in November. So maybe I'll vlog during those times, and we'll see how it goes. Or maybe I'll just start vlogging in general. We, we'll see. Uh, does anyone want to sponsor me like a little GoPro? Um, and also in terms of vlogging, I'm just not someone that's like want, that like will bring like my family into it either. So uh, I don't know. You'll be get if it if there's vlogging, there's gonna be a whole lot of me. So I'm sorry if that happens. Where are you living now? Are you still doing the video series about traveling? It's really fun to see beauty from other countries. Also, I love your beauty hauls and drugstore diaries. Thank you for that. That's so sweet. Um, again, I live in Ohio. If and when I travel, I will definitely share it with you. In terms of outside the U.S., I am really <laughs> itching to get outside of the country. Like, I just can't. Like, I actually have a cousin that's getting married this year in Italy, but I don't think I'm going to be able to go to that. I really wish I could, but... <clears throat> okay. Next, a question. First off, I love your channel and consider you a go-to for product reviews. You are incredibly real and down-to-earth and cool, and you have a way of speaking that is personable, respectful, and intelligent. Thank you so much. I really try not to say like and um, and pretty. <laughs> so, thank you for sticking with it so reliably. I have always wondered what you do for a living, like many others. I also wonder if you'll do more OOTDs. I like your style and want to see more outfits. Also, wonder if you went to school and what you studied. Finally, what are your favorite books? Keep up the awesomeness. Thank you. You are so sweet. Outfits of the days. I feel like because now that I have this camcorder going, I can easily do outfits of the days now because the issue with the T3i is like I would have to probably like zoom in and I won't be able to see and like this is the camera I used when I was in Dubai probably to do outfit of the days. So that I think we can happen. We can happen. We can make happen. Also, if you follow on Instagram, I, I think I can start posting there too. I have to kind of arrange my office at work in a way where I can like take a shot for you guys every day because I don't have time in the morning to be filming office of the day videos. So it would have to be like when I'm at work and I get like a free moment to kind of like click a pic for you guys. What kind of books do I like? I a genre that I really love is magical realism, and I've just I've always been like a Book, I don't know if it's a bookworm, but like I've always loved reading. Like I would, if you put me at the library when I was younger, you can leave me there all day. It, to me, it was like the most exciting thing because everything was free. <laughs> I was like, this is free. I can get all this, I can take all this home for free. Um, I think when I found out that uh, Gabrielle Garcia Marquez died last year, I had like an intense moment where I was just like, it was like intense sadness because I love his books so much. Uh, what else? I recently discovered Pablo Neruda, the poet. That man knows what love is. I'm just like, I didn't even know I had these feelings until I was like reading what he writes and how he writes and how he expresses. It's like, um, I don't know. I'm a late, I'm so late to like discovering him. Also, I, I like a lot of things that are on bestsellers lists. I like biographies. I love reading like fables and fairy tales and mythology from different cultures. And I love a good trashy novel. I mean, hello. I, so I basically will read everything. <laughs> what are some of your favorite casual pieces for summer? Dresses, shorts. Um, I love a maxi dress. I love um, harem pants. Anyone that like sees me in the summer on a regular basis, I love me some harem pants. And yeah, harem pants, maxi dresses. I think I might try shorts out this summer. I don't know. I've just never been a shorts person, but I think I'm ready to kind of like try that out. Um, I also love jewelry, 
I used to do jewelry hauls a lot. Actually, I have one prepared for you guys because I've been picking up accessories lately. Purses, shoes, jewelry. So I'll put up one of those soon. Um, and I also like one shoulder tops and anything with like a cutout, as you can see. Like I like details like this. What's one of your favorite foods and desserts? Pizza all day, every day. I mean, seriously. And french fries. Um, let's see. I love Donato's pizza a lot. Uh, what else did I want to say? My top cuisines. I would say that there's like a first place Thai for like Thai food and Vietnamese food. And then second place might be a Thai between like Japanese and Korean. So that's kind of where we're at. And then Chinese food, obviously. That's, that's always there. I don't even know where to put that because I, I've had it growing up. Uh, how about music? Uh, let's see. I love... My standby go-to, I love a lot of 90s R&B, and I like a lot of chill stuff right now, so I don't know. That's just what I'm into at the moment. Also, Spanish music and Arab music. Magazine subscriptions, Elle, Marie Claire. I love People's Style Watch. Uh, details and GQ. I love reading men's magazines. They're really great articles. Also, Hot Men, Muscles. That always works out really well, <laughs> too. What your favorite hairbrush? I don't really brush my hair since it really doesn't tangle. I have like coarse, dry, thick hair. Also, how well does this camera like? Well, it's not picking up the color really well. If, if you want to see, um, I finally used the L'Oreal Feria Power Violet V48 hair dye, and I put a picture up on Instagram. I'll link it below. That way you don't have to look for it. Um, this I think is doing a, an okay job of showing you guys what it looks like, but there's a, it is such a beautiful color. The purple and like kind of cranberry violety tones show up really, really well with that dye. So if you have dark hair and you want to go kind of like purple, burgundy, violet, cranberry-ish, definitely. That's a great one. Anyway, tangent. I hope this video, this video is probably going to be so long. Do you prefer, oh, hair. Hair brush. Oh, I, every so often I'll use a tangle teaser, which I kind of like. But I really don't brush my hair at all on a regular basis. Like, this hair does not tangle. Do you prefer heels or flats? I need a heel, at least like an inch or two, because I have really bad kneecaps. I've had surgeries on them, like, so having a bit of a heel alleviates the stress from having my knees kind of hold all the weight. So that's important for me. Other, but then again, I'll, but regardless of that, a woman just walks better when she has a heel. I mean, when you have flats, you, you sometimes you kind of waddle in flats. It's hard not to waddle, especially when you get tired. So I always say go for a bit of a heel because it, it looks better and you carry yourself better. And as someone who's not very tall, um, I'm like 5'1", almost 2 but not quite 2. A walking, waddling is not attractive. So heels always force you into like a better, forces you into better posture. Do you like statement necklaces or dainty pieces? It's either or. I either want like a psh, huge statement piece that like, you know, drags down into like the chest area or I just want like a little charm on a chain. Like there's no kind of in between for me. Do you prefer silver or gold? Color gemstones or diamonds? I prefer gold. I, as you can see, <laughs> I, I just, I've always liked gold. I, because I wear so much black, I just love the combination of black and gold. Sometimes it can look a little ghetto fabulous or sometimes it can look a little not so classy, but I mean, I, I always, I generally like black and gold together. Do you have a favorite nail polish color? I like black nails, um, and I also like an oval shape, like, I hate my hands, I don't know why I'm showing them to you, but like, this is like the shape that I like. These are like my real nails, I don't have anything on them or anything. And I get a lot of questions for like nail care. I don't really have like a na nail care routine. I do my nails once a, once a week, and I use acetone to remove it, and then I... I remove the polish and I paint them again. Like there's no, I, I don't have a, I don't have a routine, so I can't really share anything interesting with you. If you had a ten thousand dollars spending spree, which designer would you go to first? Uh, probably Cavalli or Dolce and Gabbana. I like to dress like I'm always on vacation, so animal prints, kind of flowy things, gold accents, stuff like that. In terms of bags, I'd probably go for like Gucci or Prada. YSL has some classic shapes, but I think I generally like Italian designers because everything's like very sleek and like fitted, either fitted or flowy. There's no like in-between stuff and they don't do like, you know, jackets that often. It's all very like permanent vacation vibe, which I love. Well, I guess, and also if I was just given $10,000, I would probably travel. I probably wouldn't go on like a shopping spree. I'd probably travel somewhere. And I think the reason, okay, 
And I think the reason why I would travel versus go on a huge shopping spree is because if you notice your, if you can like measure the amount of happiness you feel when you buy something, it is just as you expect it. Like you're like, oh, I really want this and you get it and you're super happy and that all of that is consistent with your expectations. But I feel like that amount of happiness fades once you make that purchase, even within like a day or two. But I feel like when you spend to travel, those memories and that like moment, like that, I feel like that moment of happiness is, is extended and you can think back to that memory and like relive it. Whereas I never sit there and think, oh, I want that purse. Oh, I got that purse. And then when I finally get it, I'm like, yes. But like, I don't think back and I never think back to the moment when I purchased that purse. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I think that's a decent explanation of, you know, what to spend money on. I, I don't know. Again, I feel like I don't know how to do these videos because I keep going off on tangents. Do you belong to a gym or work out at home? Uh, I started doing yoga again, half half heartedly. I think I put put it on Instagram. Like it was like my first yoga class in like over ten years. Which the last time I, I did yoga classes was when I was teaching them, and that was in college. And that was I feel like college seems like so long ago now. All of these questions came from the same person, so thank you so much for asking. Sky Lily one. Uh, she's like, okay, I'll stop. Everyone usually asks the same questions. I'm trying to think out the box. Thank you so much for doing that because I feel like there were a lot of questions here that were more personal and serious and like that slew of questions you just asked me was like a nice break for me and for whoever's watching. Uh, hi, I was wondering about your travels and living in other countries. Is this job related or for self enrichment? I think it is so cool that you get to travel the world. A lot of people ask this question to me in just random videos. When I travel, is it for business or is it for pleasure? I have family kind of all, a lot all over the world. I have family in Paris, I have family in Bangkok, in Taiwan, Hong Kong. Um, so a lot of travel is for family or for pleasure. And I want to say when I was married, it was half and half. Like, um, like obviously I was back and forth from Dubai and Bombay a lot. And Hong Kong was like, more businessy type trip and like Taiwan was probably I have family in Taiwan so it was kind of half and half there like and then when, I don't know and then once a year my family does like a family vacation whether it be in the summer or in the winter so we're very Kardashians like that okay, next question are you still married or not answer that I no longer see your ring when you travel is it for business or for personal answer that I've watched your videos since 2010 and I think and trust your reviews slash opinions about beauty products you seem to always wear black shirts. Is this because of your job or do you just like black and white ensembles because they don't clash with your makeup? I wear black because it's easy. It goes with everything. Um, I like to think that it allows me to get ready faster in the morning, but it really doesn't. I really need to be one of those people that like plans out my outfit the day before. I'm really good about like planning my makeup out. Like I'll be like, okay, I wanna wear all this stuff. I wanna try this like makeup combination tomorrow and I'll like lay it out. But I don't do that for clothes, which I totally should because it would expedite my getting out of the house process and um, time significantly. Also, I think I wear black because it just, I think it goes with like my general vibe as a person. I'm kind of like a, I think in general, I'm like an even keeled person, unless you do something to, you know, knock me off my rocker a little bit, then I'll let you know. But I usually, I'm someone that doesn't like to hold things in. So I will, if something crosses my mind or I have a strong feeling about something, I will share that with you within a few days. Um, I probably not more than a week will pass before I share something with you because I don't like being an unclear person. So when I say something to you, or if we ever have like an argument or a disagreement, you could never be like, well, I didn't know you were thinking that. That's impossible because I probably shared it with you. I don't know, another tangent. Okay, so this is about wearing black clothes. It's funny, I think I wear so much black that I think I was shopping once and the cashier was like, are you a makeup artist? Is that why you're wearing all black? I'm like, oh, no, no, no. But I have no problem with people mistaking me for a makeup artist. That's totally cool. I'm totally okay with that. I actually get asked that a lot. They're like, oh, are you a makeup artist? I really, I wish I could say I was. I seriously, I mean, that would be way cooler than what I do. I mean, in the summer, I will probably wear less black. I like to wear like neon accents and I really like like a palm tree print or like leaf print, 
but it's still kind of anchored in black. Like I'll wear black hair and pants, but like color everywhere else. These are more lifestyle type questions now. What's your favorite way to spend the weekend when you're not filming? Eating, sleeping, and Netflix. I am the average basic woman. <laughs> Um, I am curious about the artwork on the wall behind you. Can we see the entire picture and who is the artist? Um, I already put that on Instagram and I will start putting more things on Instagram. I will link it below. I think there's a lot of people who wanted to see kind of the things around my house. So I will definitely put that on there. Are you planning on seeing the Fifty Shades of Grey movie? Are you a fan of the books? I haven't seen the movie. I don't plan on seeing the movie. I have read all the books. I found them thoroughly enjoyable. I read them when I was in Dubai and I was like, hmm, these are good. It's by no means like groundbreaking literature that will like define that genre. I mean, I guess it does define the genre to some degree because a movie has been made or a series of movies will be made, but it definitely has made like BDSM a lot more mainstream or like dominatrix domination type things more common to talk about. I don't know. That wasn't grammar. That wasn't really proper. Oh my god, whatever. Who cares? Um <laughs> And then these are the last two questions, which are more like, I guess, insightful. If you could do something over again, what would it be? To be honest, probably my eyebrows. I feel like, I'm just kidding, <laughs> but I really, ugh. I feel like I've gotten it to like a good place, but, well, you know, I'm using Rapid Brow. I've been using Rapid Brow for like a week, and I really think it has been, made, been making a difference. And I took a, fir a first day picture, so after like a couple months, I'll take another picture and update you guys on that. But... Okay, seriously though, to answer the question, I don't think I'd make any choices differently because I think it's, for me, it's probably more a matter of handling a situation better. I don't think I have made any decisions in my life that I would change, but I think it'd be more like, oh, when I was talking to that person about that thing, I wish I would have said this instead of that. So it would be more just being a more composed and more thought out person and less about changing an entire situation, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, I might still feel a certain way, but I feel like I probably could have communicated it in a better way. Last question. So, what is your biggest regret? And conversely, what is the best decision you've ever made? In the context of this video, I could say that my biggest regret was getting married and my best decision was like removing myself from from that and I, I don't even want to for a second to make you guys think that my marriage was horrible or like that my ex was horrible that is not the case at all um, we have been together for a really long time on and off and I just feel like you can love someone and they can love you and you can be financially stable but there are so many things in life and kind of in the way of of us that were kind of either out of our control or like there just didn't seem like how do we how do we work with this kind of thing and I just I don't know I'm really not gonna share any of that with you guys but you know for some people love and stability is enough for us we had that I don't know that it was enough to get us through other things that we had to encounter or deal with you know what I mean it, it was very circumstantial none of I think that at the end of it none of it was really like regrettable I feel like the experience of my life in that time period like you know at the time was probably like, like dating and or getting married I can't replace that like I I could be like oh I could have not gotten married and done XYZ but the kind of life education and my exposure to different kinds of people and to the world could never be replicated and I wouldn't trade that experience because I feel like it has made me a much... How long has that hair been in my mouth? Like, oh my god. I feel like it has made me a much smarter, aware person. I mean, it doesn't make me better than anybody else, but it makes me feel more prepared to deal with situations in life and people in life. So my takeaway from all that is just by reading a book or having a friend going through the same situation does not by any way or in any way substitute for the actual experience of it all. So there's that. So life now is obviously in a less emotional place and so that's why I felt like I could make this video for you guys. When I first got back, you know when you first go through something, how you feel about it is extremely intense and very like probably not normal sounding to someone that's not going through something and I just couldn't do this kind of video then because I didn't even know how I really felt about everything you know you question your decisions 
So now I think that I can better communicate how I feel. And like when I first got back from, when you first come back, like okay. So I mean, when, so obviously when I came back, it was like I was starting my life completely over again. And I understand that anyone that is going through a divorce, it is like a matter, a huge matter of like trying to start over again. But for me, it was a little different in that like I didn't have, I it wasn't like I was like continuing my life there. I had to come back and like start over. So it's like you just find something to do. So when I first got back, like, you know, I was working, but I was like, oh, you know, I've always wanted to own a business, which is obviously why I, why I went to business school. But so I was like, okay, I'll start like a, a website and I'll like sell jewelry and whatnot. So I had mentioned that in like a video, I think probably on Instagram also. But then that was kind of, I feel like that was very spur of the moment and like I just needed to like throw energy into something. And after I thought about it, I was like, oh, you know, I really don't think that's what I want to do Ooh. with that. I mean, eventually I do want to do something like business or into like have my own business in some capacity. But, <sighs> okay, long story short, I just, I had bought a lot of jewelry to like sell in my store or whatever, but now it's on the blog sale because it's no longer like a business venture. So I've just put a lot of the jewelry on there and it's very close to the price that I purchased it for. So it's obviously not for profit. It's more like I need to add a little bit on to like be able to ship it out to you and like package it properly. But so you can check the blog sale slash website. I'll link it down below. Um, so this kind of um, will wrap up this FAQ video. I hope I answered enough of your questions or a, at least like a combination of all your questions so that you feel like I gave you some information that you were looking for. If you have any like follow-up questions, feel free to ask them below. I will definitely answer you if I am comfortable with answering you. If you want more FAQ videos or like I don't know what to call these videos like I want to give more dimension to this channel like I said like before I felt like oh who am I to give any kind of like opinions or advice on anything but uh, like I said as you get older you get real comfortable with how you feel about things and you feel confident about what you think and what you feel so I don't know if you guys want like how to win an argument not how to win or not I really probably very very rarely win any arguments but and also, I feel like just because you disagree does not mean you are arguing or being rude. I think a disagreement is valid. People can disagree. Sometimes I feel like disagreements are confused with arguments, and I feel like, oh, I just don't, I don't, anyway, tangent. So if you guys want more videos like this, like, um, I don't know, how to get over a divorce, I really don't think I could do much of a video for you guys on that, because if you were... In the grand scheme of divorces, I feel like mine went really great. Like, like I said, like there's no like, there wasn't like hatred or animosity or like arguing like at the end of our our relationship. It was just we are the kind of people I feel like where you we didn't want to hurt the person or like be vengeful. It was just more like how do we like extract ourselves without creating too much damage. So I would say like. In terms of that, I probably could never do a good video for you guys because mine, if you're going to get a divorce, <laughs> mine went really smooth and I would hope that anyone that is forced into that situation could have the experience that I had because mine was great. That's so weird to say that my divorce was awesome. No, okay, let's stop talking now. Anyway, so yeah, I want to open up this channel to like more like personal type videos. So I don't know if vlogging is in the works or if you guys want like dating oh my gosh duh elephant in the room dating has been changed way too much since i last dated so that's totally been oh my god uh i don't know what else to say there so yeah ask ask anything you want below i will answer you as best i can or give you as much as i can without losing a part of myself you know anyway Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you guys really soon. Bye!